Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about covalent bonds. Uh, you already have gone through the ionic bonding and I expect that you got that concept clearly. But if you still have the questions, you can just comment either on YouTube or you can email or you can write to me. So I'll love to answer you and your queries. So today we are talking about another kind of chemical bonding, uh, which is responsible for forming the different molecules and compounds. And this is most common in our organic compounds. So our organic compounds are basically, they are bonded to each other through the covalent bond. So firstly, before going to discuss that what are the different reasons of the covalent bond, what are the factors which instigate the atoms or which are responsible for that bonding. So we will go for, uh, firstly, we will talk about the definition of that. So for the definition, how you can explain the, what the covalent bonds are. A covalent bond is a chemical bond formed between atoms by the sharing of one or more pairs of electrons to give a Nobel gas configuration at each atom. So from the definition, there are a number of points which you may notice in the definition. So unlike the ionic bond, this is through the sharing, not through the complete transfer. So I will give you the concept of why there is the sharing and under what condition an atom is going through the sharing, not for the complete transfer of electron. Now the second thing or the second motivation or the reason is this one, that how the covalent bonds are there. So this is also uh, explained in a definition that, that the sharing or that bond formation is basically uh, a motivation for the elements to get the Nobel gas configuration at each atom. And what the Nobel gas configuration is, that every element is, uh, has the ideal or the, their destiny um, electronic configuration of that Nobel gas, which is present in the same period so um, they must, they want to fulfill the octet rule and they want that they should have the uh, eight electrons in their valence shell. The only exception is the hydrogen because hydrogen is the simplest and the smallest element of the periodic table and its next Nobel gas is the helium. So it just go for the two electrons in it outermost shell. So as um, we have defined the covalent bond, so you know the definition of the covalent bond that this is a chemical bond. This is the bond to the sharing uh, of the electron between the atoms to attain the Nobel gas configuration of each atom. So each atom means that you have to see that the, every atom which is making a molecule it has acquired its ideal configuration and its open structure. So they, they fulfill their valency. So the first thing is that the Y atoms form colon bonds. So there are the, some points I have listed for you. So obviously the very first reason is to complete octet for attaining Nobel gas configuration. Second, unable to completely donate electrons or electron pairs. So when atoms are going through the sharing, they are not going through the complete transfer as, uh, 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 as like the ionic bonds. So um, uh, they are not able to transfer the electron completely because that is not possible for them and they cannot survive when, if they are, uh, sharing the electron. The third one is for stable molecule. So definitely um, as one of the common example is the atomic hydrogen is not stable. So in the universe that do exist as a molecular hydrogen, 
and the same case is for the oxygen as well and the helium one right so um, they are basically um, sorry for the oxygen and the hydrogen one helium is the nobel gas so for stable molecule they uh, do bound one hydrogen with another hydrogen one oxygen with another oxygen to form the molecular oxygen and molecular hydrogen so then they are surviving in the system as a stable molecule now just to uh, revise or refresh your information about the octet rule is the octet rule is a chemical rule of thumb that reflects the observation that elements tend to bond in such a way that each atom has eight electron in its valence shell giving it the same electronic configuration as a normal gas do i have um, explain that octet rule to you but uh, this is if someone is um, more uh, towards the visuals and the proper text definition so i have written that also uh, i have written that for you so you can just um, through the text and you can see and you can read that definition uh, by yourself too so the next point is here this is a slide and i wanted to explain this that why the atoms are not going through the complete transfer so i have picked the daily life examples because then they may illustrate you well so for example uh, you have a new roommate uh, if you are um, a hostel light or if you are staying at some apartment and you got uh, you have uh, you got a new roommate and you only have the one bed so if your uh, roommate is uh, required or he is not able to use the floor bedding and he is maybe he is sick and he requested you for the bed to sleep so what you will do so obviously you have only the one bed so you can't get uh, it whole uh, as a whole that you can't allow that um, you are you are not able to say that okay you can just uh, sleep on a bed and i can use the uh, uh, wood flooring uh, floor uh, bedding so maybe you are also not comfortable uh, on the uh, floor bedding so what you will do is that you will do the sharing right so in our daily examples we do have the different relationships and we have the parents and kids husband and wife and friends so there is a mutual relationship when each of the partner is contributing so we are on a receiving and we are on a donation side so we are giving something and we are taking something so uh, but these relationships could be the polar one if the one partner is giving more and he has more tendency to sacrifice or to contribute and one is on more on a receiving side so there is some kind of polarity so i will explain that what is that polarity and in chemical terminology in covalent bonds how we could explain that so here this is the periodic table so i have just um, a crop only the two periods of the periodic table so here this is a hydrogen which is a very first and the smallest element of the periodic table and its next novel gas is the helium so its desired configuration is the two electron in its outermost or the valence electron valence shell now we are talking about the carbon because carbon is making um most of the universe compound and this is the most abundant element it is in a protein it is in a carbohydrate and it's uh, in a lot of our fossil fuels plants everything so we are talking about the carbon because in organic chemistry then we are mainly discussing with the carbon so carbon next novel gas is the neon so it means it has to gain that electronic electronic configuration so i have uh, draw the electronic configuration in terms of the figure so you can see how many electrons are there in the carbon and in the neon and then we can compare so we will be able to see that why the carbon has a desire to make the bond or join covalently to any other element 
So this is the electronic configuration and the picture of um, atomic picture of the carbon. So we know the carbon atomic number is six. Its atomic weight is 12. So we are only talking about the atomic number right now because we are involved with electron because these bonding chemical reactions are through the electrons. So the nucleus is not involved in it. So if we do the electronic configuration, so the K is the first shell, which is just next to the nucleus, which is the first most shell, right? In each shell, we have the orbitals. So the K is the first shell, it only has the one orbital and that is the 1S, right? Um, you also should keep in your mind that every orbital can accommodate only two, maximum two electrons. So now in K, there are there is only one orbital. In L shell, which is outer, which is the outermost of the carbon, this has the 1s and 1p orbital, though the p orbital is again has the three uh, levels. So this is the px, py, pz. So if you count it, so you can see that there are uh, the three uh, uh, sub p orbitals and there is the 1s orbital, right? So maximum of these ones, so two we have accommodated and the first orbital. Uh, electronic configuration is uh, in that way that if the same shell is there, so firstly we have to fill that and the one orbital can accommodate only maximum two electrons, right? Now in L shell we have the more than one orbitals and each orbital can accommodate maximum two electrons. So from two, we just left with the four more electrons because the total number of uh, electrons and the protons in the carbon are the six one. So atomic number is basically the number of electrons or the number of proton by definition of any, of any element. So now you see these magenta electrons are basically, these dots are representing the valence shell electron. The valence shell is the most outermost one. So now you see, if you just look at the neon, neon has a 10 protons, 10 neutrons, and these two are the nuclei or the nucleus um, particles. So these are present in the nucleus. And now we will talk about the electrons. So in its first most uh, shell, which is a K, again, this is a 1S, and the two is giving you the idea that the S has the two electron. So here, there is the two electron. Now we will go the remaining of the electron and we'll place in the different shells. So the L shell has the three P and one S orbital. So if you just see is, there is the one S and PX, PY and PZ. So each orbital can accommodate maximum of two electrons. So the maximum electron which can place in the L shell are eight. So in its outermost shell, these are the eight electrons. So it already has filled it. That's why this is a Nobel gas. Nobel, the term we use, uh, we have assigned to this eighth group is because they are not reactive, because they don't have any desire to complete their uh, valence shell. So now the carbon is looking for that ideal. So this is its ideal configuration. So what the carbon can do, carbon has a four electron and it needs four more electron to complete its octet one. So what it can do, it can't afford to donate completely any of the electron because it has to fulfill that valence shell with the eight electrons. So what it can do is it can share with the four elements and it can develop the four covalent bonds to complete its octet one. Now this, these elements which are in bonding with the carbon can be the carbon, can be nitrogen, can be oxygen, can be hydrogen, any of which can share its electron with that one. So right now I'm just taking an example of hydrogen because this is the simplest one and uh, you are familiar with this one. 
so carbon will make uh, add the four hydrogen with that so each hydrogen is contributing one electron one electron one electron one electron so they are the four hydrogen and each hydrogen is contributing one electron so it means they are total four electron contribution for the carbon and car carbon already has the four electrons it means now it is it has gained its ideal configuration now it has completed its valence shell or it has fulfilled octet rule uh, i just need your attention for this hydrogen so hydrogen i said this is only other one electron and it's down level and another hydrogen they bound so they acquire the nobel configuration which is their ideal is and this is the helium so its outermost shell is now with the two electrons so now this is the molecular hydrogen which is h2 and that exists in nature in that form now uh, i wanted to talk about the polarity you may have played the tug of war so there are the two opposite teams and there is the one point uh, uh, by which there is a marker by which we can know that which team is on a winning position and which is on the losing position so if you just look at this picture so what we are expecting that that red team may be the winner team and they have more pull because they are somehow in their straight positions and they are just uh, seems to lose that tug of war competition so what it would be that if they have more pull means they can take that end towards their self right and they will push that team will be pushed towards the red side it means they are losing elect uh, that knob and in chemical terminology when there is a bonding so one atom one side can pull electron with the more power another one is with the less power and that power or that push is on the basis of their electronegativity so electronegativity we have defined is a tendency to pull the electron pair and a bonding towards itself so if an atom has the more electronegativity it means that has a more tendency to pull the electron pair towards itself so more electronegative element will get the uh, partial negative charge right and which is losing that electron which don't have higher electronegativity and they are less electronegative element and it is not very tightly bonding that electron pair so that will get partial positive charge so partial negative is indicating because electron is negatively charged so it means this is more has the negative charge or towards itself because it has pulled that electron towards itself rather this is getting partially means not completely these are not the proper electrostatic charge but this is the polarity some kind of poles has developed so this will be the partial negative charge and this is a symbol we use uh, for um, uh, mentioning these partial positive and partial negative charge and this polarity is uh, called the dipole moment right so there is another mathematical way how we can calculate that and we will talk in some other um uh, lecture uh, maybe so right now i just wanted to focus on that discussion so if you have to see which has the higher electronegativity you will assign the partial negative charge towards the cell and which is the less electronegative that is the partial positive charge now uh, the type of covalent bonds so the covalent bond we have defined we have see what are the different reasons why the covalent bonds are formed now there are the two types of covalent bonds on the basis of their polarity so one is a non-polar covalent bond and other one is the polar covalent bonds so difference in electronegativity between bonded atoms is determining that either your covalent bond is the polar non-polar or this is 
an ionic bond, right? So if the electronegativity difference between the two bonded atoms is less than 0.5, so this is the known polar covalent, means their electronegativity is comparable or they are almost the same. So there is none of that atom has a higher pull for the electron pair. If the electronegativity difference lies between 0.5 to 1.9 ratio uh, range, then that covalent bond is the polar covalent bond. If the difference is greater than 1.9, then this bonding is the ionic bond and then there will be the complete electrostatic um, uh, charges and that kind of charges we mentioned as a plus and negative but in case of the covalent bonds we mentioned the partial positive and partial negative charges so um, uh, electronegativity values are predetermined for each of the element in the periodic table. So if you just Google, you can get the complete list of the electronegativity values of all of these elements which are, which are discovered and which are in the periodic table. So now I have a practice question for you. So for uh, solving this question, you have a hint that just consult the table on the slide five where I have mentioned that if the difference is less than the 0.5, uh, the covalent ball will be non-polar. If that lies between 0.5 to 1.9, this is a polar. And if this is exceeding the 1.9, then this is the ionic bond. So now I have given you the electronegativity values, which are discussed and have asked in these examples, or in, these in this question. So there's a lithium, which has the electronegativity value 1.0, Carbon is 2.5, chlorine 3.0, hydrogen 2.1, and fluorine is the um, most electronegative element. This is the 4.0 because this is at the top of the halogen, uh, the seventh group. If you just look at the periodic table, magnesium has the 1.31. So this has the least electronegativity, and they are usually when they are not with the carbon, these are with some of the halogen. So they always go for the ionic bonds because this has more electropositivity and less electronegative value because they can easily donate, completely transfer the electron. So now uh, in A, this is an example that this is a molecule which is based on the lithium and the fluorine. So these are the two atoms which has combined and they have formed a bond and they have formed a molecule. This is the lithium fluoride, right? There is the methyl fluoride or fluoromethane. This is the magnesium chloride and this is the hydrogen chloride or HCl. So you have to find each of these that what are the kind of bonding they have. Either they have uh, ionic and or the covalent, and if they have the covalent, so which kind of covalent they have, either the polar or the non-polar. So uh, uh, that uh, practice question will uh, uh, you have to solve and submit on the Moodle. So then that will be graded uh, for your this lecture task. Well, thank you, have a good day.